Hello, welcome to the Future Micropayments Conference. Today I am talking with Amber Brasiers. Very interested in what you have to say, and uh, I think this should be a very interesting discussion. Um, so to start out with, I, I hear that, that you've been building real products in Second Life and having a successful career doing that. And, and I think that's an interesting story, and I think it, it's helpful for the kind of our audience and our crowd to hear examples of people who are really doing things. And I'd love to hear more about you know, how you got started in this and where it's taking you and things like that. So I've been designing mostly hair in Second Life uh, since 2005. And I discovered Second Life in 2005 <laughs> um, with no, uh, my intention was to go in and to roughly learn how to 3D model because it was something I was always curious about. And it looked like this would be like a, a very, give me some sort of rough introduction. Um, within months, I had a successful, or a business that was, that maybe took a month to go from experimentation to success. Mm -hmm. It grew virally. Um, I, I literally, designed a very basic ponytail uh -huh. and I actually textured it with <laughs> with screenshots from visualizations from Winamp's music wow. <laughs> like the, you, you could turn on these visualizations and uh -huh. they're all trippy and I didn't have any I didn't have any hair textures at the time and I was like uh -huh. you know what I'll just make them little psychedelic trippy ponytails they look awful <laughs> was there anyone else doing this or how did people were doing it and I you know in order to participate in Second Life you need an avatar mm -hmm. so you're gonna end up customizing your avatar to mm -hmm. your liking mm -hmm. and my first thought was wow anyone who makes hair is insane because it just seems very tedious and what's the reward little mm -hmm. did, I, did I know um, and and yeah so I put together a very rough ponytail with no intentions of really doing anything with it um, you can make the primitive objects flexible. And it was like a new implementation at that point. So I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to make a flag. And I made a flag and it blew in the wind. And I was like, that's, that's really cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was like, what else can I make that would flow? That would, oh, I'll make a ponytail. So I made the ponytail and I was like, okay, that's cool. And as we know, Second Life has its own market, its uh -huh. own commerce. And, and uh -huh. I thought, well, what happens if I sell it? Yeah, you just did that for fun. You just decided you're going to go down this road. Yeah. yeah, just for fun. And within uh -huh. days, I was making, I went from making 20 bucks to making $40, to making $100. And it just kept increasing and kept increasing. And then I had attention. This was all viral. Mm -hmm. I did nothing to advertise. I simply just took this product and went through the steps to, to make it available for people to buy. So like a dollar for, uh, you know, for, for that pack of, of maybe six ponytails. And, and, and so it sounds like there was a learning curve. You got over that learning curve. You started, you started to actually get success directly. You didn't have to kind of appeal to someone else. You just put it out there. I didn't have and, to do anything. And then that, and, yeah. and that became a career. Um, it never stopped growing and I never stopped getting requests to make, uh, and I should say right before I was doing that, I was toying with, right before I had made the ponytail, I, I was toying with uh, like cops costumes for avatars because it was fun mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was the only thing I had done in Second Life and didn't do anything with it it just uh -huh. you know would sign up like in the same way that you would play solitaire on your desktop computer when you were bored at work because that's I think what we were doing in 2005 <laughs> before smartphones um, I would go and and decorate my avatar for fun oh look at her now uh -huh. she's so cute and and yeah, so I, this kind of fell into my lap. I had no intentions of making um, what I thought were boring hairstyles, bobs mm -hmm. and straight hair and, you know, can you, can you make uh, pigtails? And anytime somebody would ask me to do it, I would just do it to see what would happen. And they would sell and I was like, okay, this is what people want. This is the demand. So you just so, test, you kind of just kept trying different things and you found certain things that people liked. And, and then I started texturing them with, with hair textures that I made. 
yeah. from scratch. And it never stopped. It finally stopped growing. The, the business, it, you know, the income stopped growing after about a year and it kind of plateaued off there, but it stayed successful. And every day I had new customers and I was making money every day, which was very strange to me. I thought maybe I'd make money on the weekends or, you know, that it would be you, more sporadic. Are, were, were you, are you, are you, are you a fan of the world? Like, do you spend your own time in it or do you see it now as primarily a business? In a sense? No, it's always been a business. Yeah. I mean, it was a thing that I toyed around with. It took me some time to, to realize that people do, you know, sort of live there at the most extreme and at the least extreme, they just yeah. use it as like a socializing tool. And also I think at that point, Second Life was being used by colleges as like a virtual meeting space and people tried different things. But um, yeah, I never really got into the social part of it or, or anything else that was really time intensive because it was a job. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other the other the other question I think that is re is really interesting is is it a hassle to get to kind of to get paid out to go through this whole process you know is it like Linden dollars for me sound weird I hear right. that at an all time high right now and I feel like oh no we're missing on some weird stock market but right you know <laughs> um it, that's an interesting question because I think initially it ties into the learning curve of of just figuring out Second Life you know mm -hmm. and I think at the at the end of that, and I hope this makes sense, um, getting paid ends up being the most simple part of it, even though you kind of go through these different steps to mm -hmm. actually, you have to take, you know, whatever your desired amount of Linden dollars are that you want to convert to real money, mm -hmm. you have to actually sell them on the market. So mm -hmm. it, it's not automatic, but it seems automatic because the money sells almost instantly, mm -hmm. constantly which still blows my mind after all this time that stays the same. Mm -hmm. You know, if I go to sell a hundred bucks, I'll have it converted to money, not in my bank account, but converted to money oh. within, within a minute. Huh. Okay. And then once you, once it's actually money, you know, it's kind of still virtual in a sense because it exists uh, on the website. <laughs> as far as you're concerned. Yeah. And then you will transfer, and it's, of course they charge you a fee. What's to, the fee? <laughs> uh, the fee right now I think is, you know, it was 5%, it was free for a while, then it went to 5% and now it's, oh, a little bit more than that. I don't know the exact amount, honestly. So obviously uh, the question is, are you looking beyond Second Life now? Are you looking at other worlds? I am, I have, I'm so busy in Second Life that it's been hard to, you know, transfer, like call it transferring my business because that's what I would like to do. I would like to be able to sort of copy paste my um, designs into other mm -hmm. virtual worlds if that's mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. um, I looked at Sansar, I looked at uh, High Fidelity and there, there's one, that actually seemed promising. I'm looking at my computer to see if I can find the name of it. Is that that was created from a user within Second Life who oh, understands okay. Second Life and oh. it's sort of targeted towards the Second Life users because the others aren't really. I mean, they all differ in certain ways, and the Second Life residents largely are skeptical and generally um, are apprehensive to start something new because they've invested so much into Second Life at this point, invested so much money and the inventories are huge and they've, they've created um, relationships, you know, so it's not like trying out a new video game necessarily. If you were looking for any help or support and you, in, in doing new stuff, is there anything that you would like to ask people, help or, you know, areas that you would like to, things you'd like to do that maybe, I mean, we have a technical crowd, maybe people can provide input or support around that. I personally i'm always looking for technical help in actually designing and building mm -hmm. because it's something that i certainly did not go to school for uh -huh. i have created this successful business using tutorials uh -huh. <laughs> which i still think is pretty amazing and a lot of people do that um so i am not 
a professional in them, although I, you know, I'm sort of utilizing the same tools all the time and it becomes difficult when the technology changes and advances. Do, do you have a website or a, a place where people could reach you? I, I do right now, actually, the best way to re reach me is through Facebook. Mm -hmm. Analog dog hair on Facebook is <laughs> social media. <laughs> and it's interesting because I do have a website and I know that a lot of designers do have websites, but they kind of aren't utilized that much because people uh -huh. don't really go to websites anymore. It's all about the interaction, the social media interaction. So I am on Facebook and Instagram, but Facebook is the, is the go-to. Hmm. And, I, and I think one other question I would have is given, given your perspective, is there other art or other work that you like or appreciate that you're seeing or, may, or maybe even just clever approaches to doing this kind of thing and being creative and actually making it succeed for yourself? Uh, within virtual reality or, or other people you ad admire or art or work that I mean, you know, I'm always curious to see what, what, how are creative succeeding, like tying together both autonomy, creative work, and then also being able to support it. Right. Um, you know, it's, it, that's an interesting question and I would probably have to think about it for a okay. second. Um, I am fascinated when new art forms or new approaches to art form, forms become successful. For example, mm -hmm. I have a friend who is a fine artist mm -hmm. and she paints with watercolor and she gained momentum over the past couple of years through Instagram. You know, she, um, she added tags that kind of identified her as a local artist mm -hmm. and people found her and mm -hmm. she's done stuff for major corporations and for Apple and, and mm -hmm. now she's teaching painting courses, you know, with uh, Fendi and, you know, all of these uh -huh. brands because of Instagram. <laughs> so she built a brand basically. She, in, in, she definitely built a brand. And you did the same thing. It sounds like you have a, you, you probably are recognized for this work. I am and I have been, and it's, it, it's always going to be funny to me because it was an accident. Uh -huh. You know, like I always laugh at my, my avatar's name, analog dog hair. I used to design clothing in real life mm. for about a year or so. And the, the name was analog dog. Mm -hmm. So when I started in second life, I said, well, I don't really, I was like, oh, I'm going to build a store, but I don't really feel like trying to figure out a name. I'll just call it analog dog, mm -hmm. you know, and, that, and that's fine. And then it eventually became analog dog hair mm -hmm. and the brand I've kept the name. I never really thought to rebrand. I've known people who've done it. It's been successful, but it stuck. People remember it. People, you know, the pandemic has brought past users back to Second Life and they know to come to Analog Dog Hair. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> so, it, so it's worked, you know. Great. Uh, yeah. I, th I think that's, that's it for us for now. Uh, mm -hmm. I really enjoy hearing your thoughts and, and position on this. It's, I think it's, it's a really uh, novel and I, I'd love to see other people do the same kind of thing. Maybe not exactly the same kind of thing, right. obviously not to steal your turf, but this, there's a whole spacey creativity. It feels like, you know, it's, it's fun to see someone really doing it. So thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm happy to do this. And I'm also a big fan of people doing what I do. I try to get friends into it. I've actually helped other hair designers because I just think it's a really cool way to succeed, you know? Well, thanks. Great. Okay.